Yeah, I was uh, expecting to see a completely different result, and um, my intention on this video was actually to compare a higher quality zapper to a cheaper zapper. Well, it turns out that even this little extreme zapper ZX uh, Z4X is actually a good zapper too. I know the power zapper has got a much different design than it's, it's more uh, sophisticated, highly more sophisticated design than the standard latest Clark, um, hold the Clark schematics. That's her latest schematics. And here's the Paris Sapper standard, which is actually far more sophisticated now. And um, I was just, you know, I was going to check to see what the load is. Like, in other words, if you're looking at a square wave that, say, this is at 2500 hertz on a, on a ZX Extreme Z4X Extreme, Extreme Zapper. Now I know the Hertz is a little off on the, the extreme. It's like um, it's 2400 versus 2500, but you know it's still a positive offset and everything. You can see it's up up above the line here. You know if you look at this line, this is zero line. It's above it like it should be, and um, just a hair, but. Uh, you really would want to change the volt scale to really show the difference on that for instance but I was surprised that I expected to see a lot of distortion on the waveform and um, I haven't seen any see now you can see like if I turn the scale up more it actually went a little bit above zero you can see it there is a little bit of a quarter volt offset you know if I turn the scale up where it's the off the screen you can see the offset now this is not under a load and I'm going to show you under a load what I'm going to do is I'm going to hook one of the handhelds down by my ankle in one of my opposite hands and show you the screen I was I was quite surprised even this low cost zapper works good but not all of them do not all of them do you know, just to show you that right now I connected the handhelds and watch when I touch the handheld see that it's going from Let's use the opposite hand, the right hand to the left ankle. It's going through the whole body, and it's still got a nice pure square wave. That's pretty surprising for a low cost zapper. I was like, wow. So I expected to actually see a different result, but <laughs> I guess there are some good low cost zappers out there. The uh, different, the only disadvantage is you got three frequencies um, versus having, you know. On the CC2, you have 29 frequencies and some of the right frequencies and more accuracy on the CC2. But that yeah, was surprising, you know. This is actually uh, a good quality, real low cost zapper, too. So, but there are other ones, like if you, you know, you might be looking at something like if I'm holding it real lightly here, you might be looking at something like that. Like I'm barely touching it. You might be looking at something like that or the wave doing a nice curve where it's not square and uh, but very surprisingly this little zapper is not bad too I expected to see a totally different outcome totally different but uh, apparently it's, not, it's a good little zapper so there you go now here's the power zapper CC2 with 29 frequencies and you can see it's got a nice clean square wave under no load of course and we'll put a load on it and see how it works out I'm sure it's going to be plenty fine but uh, I'm surprised the other cheap zapper worked good too not all of them will not all of them will and um, anyway let's give it a shot and here's the power zapper CC2 nice clean square wave going from my down from my ankle down there to my right hand making the connection and that's going through the body it still has a nice clean square wave but surprisingly the uh, very inexpensive sapper did it so it did what it was supposed to do too now this thing though know, if you can change the modes um, you can see that's at 30,000 yes that's 15 2500 different modes 30,000 so That's the Clark mode. I'm going to change it to scale. 
back but it's got a nice clean wave so this is um that's an MX mode that's the Rife mode it goes to different frequencies They're around 2000 something between 2000 and 2500 different types of frequencies this is the 30,000 mode um, goes at several frequencies in 30,000 and let's turn it back this is and this is 15 Hertz yeah so that's 15 Hertz very slow very slow frequency and that's a Don Croft frequency now going back up here I gotta change the scale that's a um, a right frequency that's 7 727 and then we go to this you can see it change the scale that's around uh, it's a Clark frequency around 2500 so you can change the scale and then this is an MX frequency it's around 2000 to 2500 put several frequencies out and then here's some right frequencies that starts around I think it's 2280 so there's 29 frequencies in it but they're all nice and steady and this is going through the body um, but I was surprised actually the, uh, the three frequency extreme actually worked too very well so uh, I guess there's some good ones out there that aren't expensive that still work too um, but um, normally sometimes what you'll see though is if you're running the scope through the body in other words I'm actually this is actually if I let go of this see it's there's no connection so now now there's a connection so actually this is actually running from the body through from the ankle to the hand and it's still got a nice clean square wave and that's exactly what you want to be zapping you know whatever type of microbes it's trying to address but you also need to use not just one or two or three frequencies the more frequencies and the more accurate they are the better so the CC2 has 29 frequencies the my zapper has I think 88 frequencies so but they're the very common frequencies most often used by people who attempt to address microbes with uh, microelectricity and frequencies but uh, pretty surprising experiment because I thought the uh, lesser lesser well I guess the extreme they sell a lot of zappers so they probably got their design down but many of the cheaper zappers will not have a nice clean square wave like this so just to point this out